All right, guys. Back to the pig iron nightmare. Let's take a look at how tight this is. It may not be easy to see, but there is a, a serious neck down at the top of these. You see that sharp edge? And it's much narrower on the top of the runner. GM does the same thing on their stock, stock intakes. Uh, I'm sure somebody smarter than me can explain why they do that. I don't, I don't know why they do that. But we're trying to get some airflow through this nightmare. Not really going to help. I probably should have shown you guys every runner. Notice this one. This one has the same thing on it. In fact, they all have have that some to a little bit lesser degree. Like this one isn't as radically triangular, you could say. You can definitely see it's narrower at the top of the port than the bottom. Okay, I took a really nasty bit and cranked it up and took a ton of metal out of these. Let's see if we can see the difference. Okay. Definitely got some more meat out of these. Now, does making... A big port in the middle of a restricted carburetor. Does that really help? That's a good question. Um, it may give the flow a chance to organize and actually get more mass flow out. Okay. You can see I, I hit it hard with a very rough burr. It's going to be rough. Uh, I don't know exactly what kind of texture I'm going to put on this or if I'm even going to bother. To announce to uh, the guys that are telling me, don't use this manifold. We know it's garbage. DV knows it's garbage. It would still be cool to put this heads up against... An older single plane. Someone said the 267 was a nice one. No EGR. No nonsense. Shaped like a Torca 2. At least we can probably do something with that. Is it going to be night and day over this? I doubt it. What we really need to do is get one of those old Wiens or Edelbrocks with the big old fat runners. We need one of those. And just to be a wise guy... Maybe a modern Edelbrock air gap. And if you really want to be that guy, a modern single plane. Now, DV, I told DV about the issue with the, uh, a lot of guys don't think the Polishing the rods and stuff saves that much power. I'm on the fence with it. I used to do it, and my stuff ran really, really well. But you, go, you also have to remember, I needed more strength than regular stock stuff. So a lot of the reasons I was deburring everything and polishing stuff was just to remove stress risers so I could beat the stock stuff a little harder. Because I didn't have money for good rods. It's also you know a long time ago. The good rods were way more expensive than they are today. Today you can buy a set of Chinese rods for like three or four hundred bucks. And I hate to say it, but most of them are pretty good design. I don't know whether they got the heat treat right, but well, I know a lot of guys are, are beating them pretty hard and they're holding up. So I tried to run it past DV. You know, if somebody brought a stock rebuilt 318 lower end, and we just swapped all the fancy stuff from the fancy short block onto the the plain Jane short block and measure how many horsepower it would be. I thought that would be a cool test. He wasn't interested. He's like, if somebody wants to bring down a stock rebuild three three eighteen, I'll pay for the dyno time. But that doesn't really it doesn't really do what I was hoping to do. But what we can take away from that is 
if we all can get together and do a proposal for another 318 to go heads up against this 318, I bet DV would pay for the dino time. And it would be fun too. Even if it's even if it's something like Backyard Hot Rodder rebuilds it. Throws some modern heads on it. Throws a four-barrel intake on it. Something like that. Remember, this is going to get a four-barrel on it. Okay? It's going to get headers. I'm going to get a set of uh, stock 318 manifolds, exhaust manifolds, and do what I can to them. I need a set of those. I need a single plane. Email me. Email me and send me your junk. Just for this project. Why not? You want to be part of this project anyway. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Which port is it going to be? It's going to be this port. This port is up. Okay. So that's a lower runner. Last time we got, up, I think, 154 out of that. We're going to see if my porting did anything. Let's take a look at the plenum. Unfortunately, I did not finish the plenum on this, so I can't just put it on the bench because this, this recording is not going to make it. Um, it won't stay on pause long enough, and I can't piece I can't piece these together yet. Sophia hasn't shown me how to edit these. So you can see I definitely took some metal out of, out of this, uh, but it's... It needs a lot more work. You can see nothing has been done down that down lower. That's going to need some work. And somebody said the reason the lower H flows better is because it has a much bigger plenum. And he is 100% right. Okay. Part of me, you're going to think I'm really crazy. Listen to this idea. I'm going to pause this for a sec. <sighs> okay. That plate's still on the bottom of the, uh, the pig iron. But you see this exhaust crossover? Well, what do you guys think about actually opening the plenum all the way into this to just get extra area? I bet somebody's done it before. Just an idea I had rolling around in my mostly empty noggin. All right, guys. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to have for you tonight because I still have more grinding to do in that plenum before I can even test it. So... Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.